Hello everyone, welcome to Frankenstein's Fabrics Mystery Block 12. This is our block for September. We are doing half square triangles this time around. Now, there's a couple of little things I'd like to talk about with half square triangles, and that is uh, fabric choice and rotation of the block. So, uh, what you're looking at is with your fabrics, you either want a high contrast, um, whether that's a print and a plain, or you've got color saturation, so you've got a really bright color with a really dark. So I've got black and some really nice hot pink or some bright orange. So you either want your contrast to be the print or the color. Um, the reason why I'm suggesting that is because the half square triangle block can also be our pinwheel block. Um, and so this is to do with the rotation of our color choices or our print choices in our fabric. So I'll explain that further when we start cutting and sewing, um, but that's just the first thing I want to talk to you about. Now, also, if you were in the sewing group on Facebook, a little while ago I talked about a product called Press and Seal. Yeah. Um, it is a product that's actually for the kitchen. So it's from Glad. Um, it comes in a box like your cling wrap and your foil. And it's sticky. So I don't know if you can see the texture of it on film. But this side that I've just unrolled is the sticky side. And the other side is smooth and not sticky. The reason why I was talking about it in the sewing group is that... Um, I use press and seal when I'm doing special motifs for quilting or I'm transferring things that are a bit tricky. So the reason why I mentioned it in the group is because I was talking about quilting. Um, if you would like some press and seal, um, I'm popping a link below. I actually managed to get some from someone on eBay, a uh, reasonable price. I actually ended up with three boxes because that was the cheapest option. And I've got something like 130 odd meters that'll probably take me till the day I die to use up. <laughs> so if you want some press and seal, um, you just want a sample piece to try it, let me know. Um, I can pop it in an envelope for you. you just pay the postage of the stamp. Um, let me know. Um, I'll put some more information in the sewing group as well. So you've all got it. Now, half square triangles. There's a bit of maths involved. Now... Um, where if you have I spoke about the reference book before I have no idea where it is currently I've done a bit of rearranging in the craft room because I'm doing a million different jobs at the moment um, so your reference guide there are heaps of cheat sheet charts online I'm not going to link them all because there's hundreds and hundreds of them I'll link a couple so you can get a feel for what they look like. It basically gives you a column with your cutting that matches up with the column of the finished size of the half square triangle that you're looking for. There are other ways to do half square triangles where you can do multiples at a time. However, uh, you do need to be careful about bias edges because they will stretch. We are cutting across the bias. Um, we will end up with a stretchy edge. So if you decide to do the ones that are making multiples at a time i think there's you can make four or eight i think it goes four eight sixteen not sure i'd have to check but when you start making those bigger numbers you've got more bias edges happening so you need to be more careful with your cutting and your pressing and your trimming um, of your half square triangles now the other thing too is if you don't like some of the mats <laughs> who does to be honest uh, with the half square triangles because the maths is things like seven eighths one eighth um, three quarters whatever if you don't feel comfortable cutting any of those um, smaller increments because your ruler your eyesight whatever it is that um, that causes the issue for you um, round up just go up to the nearest whole number so in a case of you know we discussed this previously about cutting um it was three and seven eighths or something 
round up to four because it's literally one eighth of an inch off being four inches just round up to the nearest whole number it'll make it easier and then when you've pressed and trimmed you can cut back to the size you need and then everything will be fine it does involve more wastage but it is what it is it's going to be minuscule but if you're more comfortable cutting whole numbers um, then that's fine we can we work around it that's basically all it is okay so I'm going to get set up here with my fabric um, today I have chosen to do my grey cats and my medium pink I'll just get them won't be a sec so I've picked these two because I decided to do uh, I laid out all the blocks on my bed had a look at all the eight the previous eight blocks and I've counted how many times I've used the fabrics and I'm making adjustments as I go now for the last few blocks because I need to change the ratios of my fabrics so I'm using my grey cat so the dark grey background and my medium pink so this is what I was talking about with the contrast so I've got print is my contrast to my plain if I was doing two planes I would have done my really dark pink and my really light pink um, I don't have a contrast in terms of print so this is why I decided to do one of each so this is we're going to show I'll show you the layout to do pinwheel but you can do other configurations so we will get set up and start going so here I have my squares I've actually cut mine a little bit bigger than I would normally for a half square triangle I've cut them at eight inches um, instead of the seven and a half and the reason being is that because I've got a because I like to straighten up my half square triangles and I'll I want to allow for any shift in the fabric and if the um, when I iron and things like that but also because I want to um, slightly fussy cut a bit my pattern once it's in the triangle shape so I want to if I want to adjust slightly higher to get this row in here with the bird or whether I want to come down lower and get make sure I get the feet um, so I'm just going to tweak a little so I've just cut them a little bit bigger um, I will explain that in the notes as well um, but if you're using fabrics that don't matter too much about your fussy cutting view of the print then don't worry so cut two squares of each of your fabrics so on your plain fabric or on the back of the one you can see the most draw a diagonal line I'm just using a lead pencil because this is going to be on the back so it won't matter so this line and then put the fabrics right sides together and then we go over to the sewing machine and we're going to use our quarter inch foot here and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch so run the guide of your quarter inch foot and the seam will run along here so I'll set that up and we'll go to the next step so here we are at the machine the usual suspects universal needle I've got white thread so you can see it on the film I've got my uh, quarter inch foot with the guide so you can see the little guide is like a tongue that sticks out there are quarter inch feet for some machines that do not have a guide um, just use whatever you're most comfortable with now I'm just going to check my rotation here so if I put my fabric this way and I fold it back I can see that I'm gonna have my let's call it the fence line across this way here and on this side it'll be running that way if I turn it this way I've got the opposite running so I just see where I want the most of my print I think I'm gonna go that way so the tongue of the quarter inch foot and you can pin if you want you can always pin when if you want if you're comfortable pinning please pin so my guide is on the pencil mark and my needle is just on the fabric now one thing you'll have to note with sewing like this is that it's very easy to stitch slightly off um, when you're coming to the end of your 
fabric. Um, it's kind of like a unintentional pull thing because it's the end of the fabric. It doesn't seem to happen so much at the start, but it does happen at the end. Um, so just keep an eye on that. So turn it around, line it up again. threads and with a pair of scissors you can just cut on the pencil line and separate your triangles now just before I go to the ironing board I just want to explain one little thing here if you were to be making more triangle, Husker triangle units at a time, you cut your fabric a lot larger. So say for instance, I was making four here and I wanted them quite big. So I'd start with maybe a 10 or a 12 inch square. And what you actually do is you sew on your diagonals and you also sew at the horizontals. And then you cut everything apart and you end up with multiples of your triangles. Now this is what I was talking about with the, uh, the bias edging. Now what happens here in this diagonal seam, there's stretch. You can see the curve happening there. Now if you were to cut triangles and sew them together rather than cut squares to make triangles, you would find that this is where you would have the most problem because this likes to move. So by making triangles out of two squares like this, you're reducing the movement in this center section. So just keep an eye on that if you decide to do other techniques. Um, do some test blocks and things like that and, and see how you go. Okay, so here we have our four units. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run over with the iron and set the seam. Setting the seam helps you get a slightly crisper edge on your seams. And then all I'm gonna do is press to the darker fabric. Now you can press your seams open if you wish. Um, just be advised that there is going to be a junction where everything meets up in the center. So if you feel like you're better off pressing the seams open to deal with that bulk, by all means do so. But otherwise, just press to the darker fabric. Now remember to check your seams front and back so that they haven't rolled over. And you can do that, you can just check by pulling a little bit with your fingers. And if you see it hasn't come, just nudge it with the tip of the iron. So you want that line as straight as possible. So press all of your units to the darker fabric. Now, there are some schools of thought on pressing with steam and not steam. And I'll tell you what, each to their own. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, steam helps me handle fabric better. Like, it, it I, I get a bit more control over it. I, I can, anything that's misbehaving, I can hit with a bit of steam and, and fiddle with it that way. But there are a lot of people who will teach you not to use steam because you can stretch the fabrics and you can. Um, I don't disagree with that. But the thing is, I have much better luck with steam than without. So um, that's a personal preference and I'm not going to be the quilt police on that one. That's totally up to you. Okay, so we're all nice and pressed. We're all nice and flat. We'll go over to the cutting mat and do the next step, the fussy cutting. Okay. So here we have our units. I'm gonna do these one at a time. And what I've done is I've got my six and a half inch ruler. 
so my, I've got a square and I'm going to turn my block so that I've got my uh, 45 degree angle this way and what I want to do is I want to put my ruler the 45 degree line on my ruler on to the seam and then I'm going to adjust it so that I can either get more of my cat's face in down the bottom here in the row of pumpkins okay so this will give me the pumpkins here I'm not worried about this cat here inside a pumpkin and I'm not worried about this pumpkin here so I've got it pretty much right on this bottom corner minus a minuscule amount barely a couple of threads wide and make sure that the line stays on the 45 and I'm going to cut the side and the top I'm then going to turn it around completely line up the 45 again and the two straight edges that I just cut now if you have a rotating cutting mat that's very beneficial if you're going to be cutting a lot of these because you find that the turning around of everything does get a bit tedious okay so I'm going to do all four of my blocks and then I will show you rotation and layout okay so all four blocks all four units are cut now and now I can play around with my rotation now as I was saying before we were talking about the potential of making a pinwheel block so this means that my print is going to move around my block um, and it's not going to be the same it won't be directional so I will have some upside down cats and pumpkins and what have you so this gives you our pinwheel now this is generally if you look at what half square triangles are used for they're used for making things like flying geese pinwheels um, you can do directional triangles and things uh, some people use them to make uh, arrowheads on blocks and things like that so there's a whole bunch of different things so if you wanted to do like a flying geese now flying geese are normally made with this piece of hole so this is making up a flying geese so you could do it so we have that kind of layout we could do it so that the triangles are going in this kind of direction so we've got like an hourglass thing happening um, personal preference whatever you want to do you could do it so that we have like a um, actually I'll go this way we have these rhombus shapes through, through here you could do it so that you have um just a block like this so you've got everything going in the same direction but pinwheel is is the one i wanted to do so we're going to go pinwheel so pinwheel what you're looking at is the print is next to the plane So that you've got it runs around so it alternates and runs around the block so same technique as we have done previously join two units together and two units together press the seams in opposite directions and then join them the two rows together so I'll set that up and we will go from there as always remember that to, you need to keep your rotation in place so pin together if you need to or place next to you so you can keep them in the right sequence for sewing and chain piecing again now I've actually got my seams here butted up at this join here I'm not too worried about out here because I can manipulate the corners but I'm just they're nice and butted up there
Now these are going to be the opposite because this is the other row, so they're butted up at the top here. Okay, separate the unit, trim the thread. So I'm just going to open up and check. So everything looks good there. So I'm just going to press one to the left and one to the right. And then I will sew them together at this middle point. Okay, so you can see here I've pressed one to one side and one to the other. I'm going to put them together and butt the seam. And I am going to put pins here because this is something that I do not want to shift at all. And I'm also going to place a pin on either end because everything's now trying to move so I just want to keep it all in place now the thing with pinning and I have said this before I've been doing this for about 20 years now almost 20 years it's like 19 and a bit I can feel what the fabric's going to do in my hands so I'm kind of used to fabric misbehaving and and what have you the reason why I say to students to pin is because you're just starting out, you don't have that instinct of feeling the fabric and you are learning the techniques. Now, if you get to a point where you're comfortable with a, without putting a pin in, by all means, there are certain points that I still pin and it's usually junctions like this with triangles. Um, if I've got a lot of things coming together in the same sort of location, um, or if I need an extra set of hands. And that's how you should treat pins in a way. They're a device to help you hold things together. So don't think that you're doing the wrong thing by not pinning or that you're doing the wrong thing by doing too much pinning. It is personal preference along your own journey of learning all of this. So there's no right or wrong here. Um, and if people tell you that it's wrong not to pin please don't listen to them. <laughs> um, so it's, it's personal preference. Mine is just experience knowing where and when. Um, I also feel like pinning um, at the stage that I'm at with things is a waste of time for me. Um, and that's part of um, just my skill set sort of thing. Whereas students, they're, you're learning, so you want to be able to do everything properly before you understand where and where you can fudge the rules a little bit. So pin until you feel comfortable is my advice there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to sew this line down. Now this is where this junction is important. Now I don't know if you can see, oh yes you can see on the camera. Let me just grab my duvalaki so I can point it out to you your quarter inch seam is going to run along your six millimeters from the edge you want to hit the junction here where this seam so this row of stitching here crosses this row of stitching here now that's just there now the reason you want to hit this is because that is the bit on the front where the fabrics cross over so once you've hit that point and if you've pinned and abutted the seams properly, you'll also hit the, the same point on the other side. So if I flip that over, you'll see here the junction where the two rows of stitching cross is about six mil from the edge. So the reason for this is, this is like a visual cue for you, along with the quarter inch guide on your foot, or the, if you don't have the guide, the, the measurement of your needle position on the, the side of the foot. It's a visual cue that you know you've hit the right point and then you continue on so this is the the most critical point at this stage so line everything back up now you can do this slowly to make sure you do hit it or if you've got a machine that doesn't like bulky seams you might have to use a hump jumper or things like that So 
just take my pins out, trim that, that thread there. Now, if you look, can you see that in the light? I've now got three rows of stitching coming to a junction and the same on the back. So when I open this up, everything meets in the middle with some extra thread. Um, so everything is perfectly aligned there. And that is how you get your accuracy with your, um, your quilting. You need to be cutting, pressing, piecing, um, and, and all of that has to be accurate as you can get it to keep this accuracy here. Now this seam here is really bulky. So this one I will press open. Um, remember what I spoke about the other day about um, ditch quilting and things like that. I'm not going to be ditch quilting this quilt so I'm not worried about open seams but if you are ditch quilting please um, just be aware of what you have pressed open, closed or otherwise. Okay so we'll press that and our block is done. Okay so last press, pressing it open. Just do it gently so that you don't move your other seams. You need to restarch at any point you can do that check it on the front okay just give it a touch up alrighty so there we have our half square triangles that make a pinwheel uh, if you have any questions about this block please let me know um, just you can pop it in the comments below or you can send me an email or a text message my all my details are below if you um, would like to uh, do other variations on this um, rotation by all means because that will make your sampler quilt uh, more your own and um, make sure you pop your label on and we'll go from there so I hope you enjoyed this block um, and I will see you next month and we only have a couple more blocks to go. We've got three So it'll be interesting to see what those last three blocks are um, Not even sure what I wrote down originally to be quite honest <laughs> So see how you go with the pinwheel block or the half square triangles and um, Let me know if you've got any any questions and we'll go from there Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications to see any of the videos that I post on YouTube Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.